Hello all, welcome to Illuminate the Oracle, happy to have you, welcome and welcome back. Alright, so, <clears throat> I'm thinking this is going to be a love reading, I'm thinking this is going to be a no contact reading, um, at least I think, so we'll see what the reading comes out to be, um, to be, <laughs> to be, to be, to be, I never actually watch any movie from Tubi. Um, but Tubi, as in the two words, Tubi, I keep, um, <clears throat> what do I have in my head? I have Hurts Like Hell in my head, which is a song by the great legendary Aretha Franklin written by Babyface, the great legendary Babyface for the great legendary soundtrack for Wait Dex Hell. And I remember having a, uh, such a, a close association to this grown-ass love song, even as a child. Um, I was, of course, obsessed with Whitney Houston, so I had to go. I had to experience this era of a movie as a child. And I was able to, thankfully. Thank goodness for the mother that I had, the mother that my soul chose, because she allowed me to see it and experience that era of time. Uh, and so, yeah, luckily enough, the whole album, it wasn't just my favorite diva on there. The whole album was jam-packed, filled with, like, some of the best divas of all time. And so, <clears throat> even as a child, I grew a fascination with a very veteran diva by the name of Aretha Franklin. And uh, she recorded a song on there called Hurts Like Hell, and it always just moved the hell out of me. It always sounded so cinematic. It always just sounded so grown up. <laughs> <laughs> grown up so this is a love tale about uh, obviously grown ups but there's something about the love itself that feels very grown the connection itself feels very grown it feels like it's it's not for the faint of hearts it feels like the experience, it is, the experience itself as well as the love that the two parties feel for one another is an unparalleled feeling. Is nothing that anyone could ever give a counsel on unless they have actually gone through uh, very similar uh, situations or have um, found themselves to be very similar situations as far as the type of love that they're experiencing. If not, they're not a counsel to you. They cannot give you advice as it pertains to, to this type of connection. The card has already fallen out as I've been speaking, so we're going to go ahead and jump into this prayer. Um, but the song in my head is Hurts Like Hell. Somebody is fighting for love in that song. She's fighting for love, but she's being really realistic about it. She's being really realistic about herself. Um, she almost starts the song off like a testimony. It's like, uh, <clears throat> love was always supposed to be something wonderful to me. To watch it grow inside yourself To feel your heart beside itself Sometimes it hurts to love so bad Even when you're giving it your best Sometimes it hurts to even laugh Sometimes a pain it's just too much, and it hurts like hell. That's the way it feels. Um, ah, oh, there's like, ah, oh, the bridge in that is like one of the best bridges of all time. I'm trying to get the lyrics out that I feel like the reading needs to hear. Um, any lyrics that kind of stand out from that song. Um, uh, I know there's like, um. <clears throat> Ah, uh, here we are, the two of us, so full of love, so little trust, but we've got to learn to let it go, and forget all the pain we knew. Learning how to, that's the way that, that's the way that she realizes that's the way that we can get this train or this train back on the track, the connection itself that she's singing about is to truly let it go and forget all the pain we knew. And it doesn't necessarily mean the pain they experienced together, because it, it could be a brand new connection. Even if it's a brand new connection, it's like we can't go into this brand new connection bringing the bags and the pain that we've experienced from the past. We 
definitely have to be, you know, um, having the best intentions. And can we truly say that we have our, our best intentions that we're truly moving our best foot forward in a new situation by still having old doubts and old um, ways of thinking plaguing how we maneuver and navigate in this new experience, you know? Um, so anywho, <laughs> so let's get this prayer. Oh my gosh. All right. Father God, Mother Divine, Archangel Michael, please, Archangel Michael, please cover me and my collective as we receive these messages today. We only seek messages of your highest vibration, messages that you deem for us to receive today. Any ill will or evil eye energy sent our way, kindly remove, block, return that energy back to its rightful owner, bind them in their own energy so it can never harm anyone again. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. All right, so... <clears throat> For someone being away from you right now, it hurts like hell to them. They're really going through about the ways in which they loved, how they loved before in the past. And it's not like they can sit here and say, woe is me, I've loved so recklessly. Um, love has never looked out for me the way that I wanted it to look out for me. Or It's like, I can't really say this person feels woe is me because i think they've gained the wisdom to realize that they may have not been fully functioning with the proper set of uh tools or ways of thinking it's like they probably didn't they understand or under they understand that they didn't they probably didn't have the right ideas even as it pertained to love even as it pertained to mate selection in the past and so whatever was they held inside themselves and doubted, it was based off of faulty information. It was based off of old information. It was based off of um, information that was always expected to, to grow and expand upon, but it kind of just, it, word didn't get through. <laughs> Somehow, some way, something did not get through to this individual in time. Uh, to avoid a loss on their part. And so it, it, it feels like it hurts like hell. Um, <laughs> this is the card that came out. So we're talking about Divine Masculine. All right, so this reading is going to be about a Divine Masculine. <laughs> Shocker! <laughs> okay. okay, so that was the card that came out. Um, I feel like this divine masculine is, is very contemplative in their world right now. They're sitting up in their room. Brandy, sitting up in my room. Do, 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 do. I must confess, I'm upset about you. I was the song. This is someone who's, it's like this person is, I feel like they're working really hard, but when they have their free time, when they have their alone time, it's, they don't do the things they used to do at all. Like this is the energy of that Brandy song sitting up in my room. This is like, I'm so in love. I can't stop thinking about this person that's on my mind. I'm going to have to bring this up to them. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to let them know <laughs> about, about this overwhelming emotions that I feel. But, you know, until then, I'll be sitting up in my room. Like this, I don't feel like this person's going out. I, I feel like they sit up, if they have time to themselves, if they're not able to, if they're not able to transmute <laughs> those energies in like a physical work, in, in some sort of work, um, then I feel like they do contemplate a lot about you <laughs> by sitting up in their room. Um, or, yep, I feel like it's something about, oh, here we go. We got Beauty and the Beast there. Use your heart, not your eyes. So you got this person, you're making this person's heart speak in their isolation as they think about you. They think about it. I feel like it's something you could have even said or taught to them. Your love taught them to use their heart, not their eyes. But I do feel like... <laughs> Even as they use their eyes, darling, <laughs> it'd be foolish to say they can't see or or uh, notice your beauty and how your beauty speaks to them. It's it's very unique. It's not like a beauty like anyone else. And so that's a part of it's a part of you know when they 
when they judge your beauty or when they notice your beauty or when they just stare at you is not due to a beauty. It's not like they're basing that beauty off of like any kind of general standards. It's what they deem. <laughs> That's their judgment, their standards. Um, like you could be like the most beautiful person to them. But it's not just it's not just the physical, it is the exterior as well. Once again, I feel like your energy taught this person that there's a lot that meets the eye. There could be a lot that meets the eye, and there can lot there could be a lot that lays in the surface that um, can be underneath. There could be a lot subliminally that uh, a person can pick up on. Um, Beauty and the Beast as well. There could be something that's uh, opposite between the two or unexpected between the two. Um, also, when I see Beauty and the Beast, it makes me think of like a masculine energy that could have been quite bullheaded and could have cursed themselves because they could have jumped into somebody's trap <laughs> and that they, they could have thought they knew it all or could have been an energy of a, a no, of a know-it-all or someone that um, ah, they could have got themselves cursed because they were moving based on just the physical appearances of things and that could have gotten them that could have uh, they, they could have attracted or manifested something that you know mirrored that you know whatever it is that you Whatever your true intentions are, it can't be hidden. Definitely not from the universe. So it's like you can say you can say you're jumping in a relationship for love, but if the universe picks up on the fact that you're really you're really looking for finances, or you're looking for someone that looks like a, a basketball player or whatnot, or you're specifically looking for someone that has the funds of a basketball player, it's like whatever you say, it doesn't matter. The universe is going to pick up on what it is that you truly desire. And it's going to mirror those traits back to you. So it's, 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 it's just the way it's going to be. It's just the way it is. So, yeah. So, yeah. Someone's sitting up in their room. As the, oh, could because they're running from a thought bot. So I feel like someone has cut strings with a thought bot. Somebody that they have, I guess, realized was not just theirs. It was they belong to multiple people. And so now they're running from them. Um, I speak, I do wordsmith. This person has something to say to you. They have something to say to you, but I do feel a hesitation because they know that you're a wordsmith. I feel like, I feel like they can know that you're good with your words and it's like they really want to be specific about what it is they need to say to you. It says communication, resonance, creativity. I speak, I do, will, purpose, and strength. Okay, so it's definitely going to take this person all the strength to communicate a message to you. Um, but they do feel like it's a purpose to. So it's something that they can't push off. It's not something they can uh, say they're not doing. It's like, even if they say they're not doing it, it's probably like that day or that hour. They can push it off, but it's inevitable. It's the energy of like, you can push it off, you can delay it, but it's inevitable because it's not going away. You're a superstar in this person's eyes. But I think that's kind of a little bit of the problem here is that they felt once upon a time that you were just like too fab for them. Like there was just, why would you, there was an energy of like, why would you want me? And, you know, um, any for anyone that feels that way, whether it be feminine or masculine, everybody has to get the handle on themselves. When it comes to things that they want, we all likely have to do whatever we need to do to kind of fake the funk and convince ourselves that we're good enough for the things that we strive for. It's unfortunate that a lot of us or so many of us have to do that because we just weren't given those type of instillment tools of, of, of needing to do things without that type of inspiration. But everybody has their own way and everybody ultimately discovers what works for them. And I, I feel like this person is coming out of this fact that 
you are too good for them, although they may still hold you up on this pedestal. But there is this, on this card, there's two stars here. You know? So there is that reminder that, like, what you admire in me, you can admire within yourself because what you see in me is what's inside yourself. Vice versa. The things that you find frustrating in me, you could also find frustrating within yourself. So it's it, it goes both ways. It's like, you know, that's where that mirroring energy comes in. And this card definitely is displaying some mirroring between the two with the stars there. Um, I feel like y'all both are star seeds. And uh, spiritual test. Somebody passed their spiritual test 100%. We already know that my babies, my collectives, my darlings, uh, my Ali Ali Oxen Freeze have passed their spiritual tests. Numerous tests, numerous tests. Time after time, time after time, you've been passing these tests left and right, right? So this is making me feel like it's someone else. This makes me feel like it's a, a new student <laughs> that has enrolled in the spiritual school, that has been putting themselves to the test, that has been healing themselves, that have been isolating themselves from people that could have possible influence over their transition. Um, this is some, This is a new enrollee, it feels like, or a newer enrollee, because it feels like my collective have been enrolled in the school for quite a time. So this person has finally entered in. Um, but I, I think I, 100%, <laughs> whatever they're doing, this person's putting the work, and it's 100%. It says flying colors pass. So I feel like they was recently tested. They recently had a major test that they had to pass. It was the ultimate test. It was an ultimate test for the universe to kind of see where this person. That's why I, I created these cards. That's a spiritual test, 100%, 50% healed to kind of get a gist. Someone, some getting somewhere almost their effort. And so we got the 100%. We got 50%. And we got, yeah, so we got both 100% and 50%. So that could be a multitude of things. Like somebody could be 100%, <laughs> somebody could be 50%. Uh, but it feels like this person is getting there. This person is putting the effort. But I do feel like there was, they were tested to see like how far they've come or whether they would backslide and revert back to old behavior um, that once gave a certain level of comfort. But this person is not about any more certain level of comfort. <laughs> they got their eyes on the prize. This person has their eyes on the prize. It's, it's not about temporary fulfillment. It feels like it's about this energy they're searching for, this innocence, this pure heart. So they're looking for this love connection that felt like purity of heart. <laughs> there had a certain level of innocence to it. It was an innocence to the feeling of it. It's like that energy of love that makes you feel all giddy and shy. But ah, it can, it can make you feel shy. It can make you feel like... Like those times when you felt crushes, right? That Those crushes that would just take up so much of your energy as, as when you were, you know much much younger um action so we got here keeping awareness action is headed your way coming up something is coming up or coming in beware i stalk your socials on a daily look into that this could be a dirty diana that stalking your that's talking your socials on a daily. They could be trying to come in to start some BS, and that could be the action that you may need to look up or look up. I guess pay attention to. I don't. I don't believe that you need to engage in any kind of way with this dirty Diana. But I think it's just um, having an awareness of where that action may be going or where it's coming from or what have you. Um, someone knows that something is headed your way and it can be quite um, uh, quite unexpected for you financially or just the situation itself. I feel like someone 
<laughs> this is kind of like a life changing kind of situation with this car. So it definitely speaks of like foundations. It definitely speaks of um, residence. I'm hearing crown. So it's like someone wants to crown you, and someone wants to officiate something here. Um, this is someone that is <laughs> done with users. They could have recently kicked out a user. This is someone that has had their fair share of um, dealing with people that were of the smoke and mirror quality. Um, this could have been someone that also wore a mask themselves and kind of kept to themselves that they were obsessing more than they could admit to you. Because I feel like they had a lot of dark secrets that they were fear to face. Okay? But I feel like this is something that you knew. You know. You know or knew. High Priestess. You know that I'm connecting with. You could also connect with this idea that you're a late bloomer. And you really are just now kind of opening up to yourself. Or discovering yourself. You could have worked open a soul awakening. So you're awakening to your soul's skills and personality types. Or personality traits and skills and interests. Things that could have always been an interest to you but you're just now kind of rediscovering it or reconnecting with it um it also says new perspective i feel also feel like this person has gained a new perspective as it pertained to how they felt about love initially um it could be also changing <laughs> there could be even way parts of yourself that through this connection um your ideas about love has man or has expanded upon as well. It feels like wisdom, you know. Somebody definitely wants to let's get away <laughs> with y'all. Okay, let's let's see what is happening. Show me the energy between these counterparts right now. Breaking free. Okay. For this truth. All right. So I feel like <laughs> space is being cleared, my babies. Space is being cleared for a conversation. Space is being cleared for something to be, to, something is breaking free due to truth or this truth. And here we go again with this innocence. This is what this person is looking for. So it's like there's not a whole lot of. Any kind of competitors that think they compete in this arena, it has to match this vibration. <laughs> and you can't fake the funk when it comes to this. You can't fake being innocent. How <laughs> you gonna fake that? It's like if someone knows someone, if the whole community knows someone to be like the biggest like hoe of all time, and it's their wedding day. And they wearing this big white dress, and the whole town knows this person's business. They know exactly where they've been, where they be, who they've been with, every single one. Like they just know everything. And this person is this person is not gonna stop this person from getting what they want. They still gonna wear that white dress walking down the aisle. It's kind of just like you just can't fake it. This is the energy like you can fake that. That you can fake, right? You can just you can put on any color dress you want. It don't matter what people think and say, but this is the energy you can't fake. <laughs> it's just, it is what it is. Like this, these type of connections, they have a certain level of innocence to them or like, there's like a purity because it really does kind of like activate inner child healing with each other. And that's why there has to be a certain level of uh, healing and accountability Um separately within each other before these connections can come together or could come back together. So it's either way, you know, because the universe doesn't want uh, these connections to get broken down due to us not allowing ourselves to deprogram ourselves first. You know, we can't be still programmed in the matrix and locked into the matrix and still expect to enjoy this level of energy to its full capacity the way 
<laughs> father would like us to enjoy it. You know, Con so there's been a lot of time and contemplation to really to really analyze uh, each other's journeys separately outside of each other. I feel like um, before these connections could either come back together or even recognize each other for the first time, there needs to be this certain level of I am I am complete <laughs> and uh, yeah in my space I'm, I'm complete in my space um, not only I'm complete in my space but the things that I've gone through those those things were for me it wasn't against me okay it helped me to see where I need to see so I could learn and grow we all have past we all have things that we need to know this is earth school and so we all are obligated to have the things that we have, the things that we've gone through in order to get to where we are today, you know? And so there's nothing that anybody can take from you or judge from you. I feel like there will be kind of like a continued delay between reunions or getting to know each other or seeing each other or recognition until both have an understanding that they're not at fault. Like, when it comes to the experiences that we need, when it comes to the lessons that we needed to learn, okay? There may be some apologies needed for specific uh, behaviors that was, that was, you know, shown, but not for the decisions themselves. You know, the decisions themselves, everybody had to do what they needed to do in their own respective corners, okay? Okay. But I do feel like y'all dream about each other. They dream about you. You made you about them. I feel like there's a lot happening in the dreams between the counterparts at this time because there is that preparation that, like, the helicopter's getting ready to land. It feels like a helicopter's getting ready to land for sure. And it just it feels like, uh, what did I say? I said it feels like a helicopter's getting ready to land for sure. And what car pops out? Decision. Once that helicopter lands, you're going to be asked to make some decisions. Somebody thought I wanted you to make some decisions. I don't know. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. If it's not something you want, it doesn't have to be anything you want. You get to decide. This is your world. <laughs> Whatever it is you want, you know? You, don't, you never have to have nothing you don't want. In this world, right? But somebody is in love. I said you you never have to you never what did I say? You never have to want anything you don't want in this world. But whomever I'm connected to, y'all love each other equally. This love goes both ways. This love goes both ways, my darling. The dreaming, dreaming came right back out again. Yeah, I feel like this person dreams about you a lot, and they think about you during the day, dream about you at night, and think about you during the day. There's no escape. There's no escape in this love. There's no escape. <laughs> They're aware of who they belong who they belong to. <sighs> they do feel like y'all belong to each other. <laughs> it's something very this person is focused on their healing. I feel like this person also recognized you as a soul family. Cause you see there's a group of people there that's healing together. They're like-minded individuals. So this feels like you're going to be walking into a new era of people who are just more like-minded than you. They're going to feel, it's going to feel automatic. It's going to feel nearly as automatic as the as your special person when you met them. But it's not going to feel like, you know, romantic or sexual. It's not going to feel that. It's not going to feel that similar to your boo. But it's just going to feel, they're going to feel very familiar to you. Um, and you guys are going to bond over like-minded people things or like-minded activities or skills or or something um but it feels like this is the introduction to your soul family 
And I do feel like a big part of that was, you know, was or is going to be the reconnection to your counterpart because your counterpart is, I believe, one of the first people you meet from your soul family that you encounter with, you know. So reuniting with them again, reconnecting with them again is almost like it's almost it almost feels like a bit of like that helicopter that's meeting the ground, you know. It's like the start of it all of you connecting to to people who speak to you on a soul level. Feelings. You're gonna be in your feelings. I feel like it's gonna be a surprise to you. You're gonna be in your feelings about it. So prepare now. If I have a hold your peace. Whoa. Okay. I feel like that deck is done. Okay. Um what do I want to do next? Okay. Show me the, the energy of this person currently right now. What is this person? Show me the energy of this person right now. Holy Spirit. What is my collective need to know? What is my collective need to hear? Show me the energy of this person as it, as it stands right now. I know my collective would love to know the energy of this person currently, right now. So one card. Show me the energy. Show me their energy in one car, Holy Spirit. The energy of my collective person. Show me their energy in one car. How do you want the spirit? Okay, so Queen of Swords in the reverse. That could be... Oh. Ooh, in the Hermit. They're in Hermit. So they really are avoiding a, a nasty, nasty tude with someone that they've had to put the axe on. This is someone who is a queen of swords in the reverse. So they're a straight up liar. This could be someone that's looking to have a communication with you. I feel like they're really upset because they've been cut. They've been cut. They've been let go of. They should grow and transform their life, but instead they may be looking to bash to lash out. I feel like this person's a very nasty person, especially with their words, which we've seen. It came out. Um with this beware card. Okay, it says awareness up, coming in, beware, action. So this person may be trying to stop something from happening. This this person who got axed doesn't know what's going on with your person because your person is in hermit mode. As we as we constantly keep seeing in these readings a lot that the divine masculine, which this reading is about, that's the first card that came out, divine masculine, is in hermit. And they've cut their strings when it came to a multitude of people, not even just one person. Anyone that kind of reflected the past for them, but not the past generally, <laughs> but whatever represented the past for them in a demoralizing, debauchery, debauchery kind of way, whatever meets that vibration for them, they know what they're doing with it. They're, they're trashing it. And so it's it's forced them to go into her mode. And this is where they've been. And I feel like it's really putting somebody in a mode of, 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 of anger, of, of wanting to be overbearing, wanting to control it. Um, this is a cold-hearted, dangerous person. Um, it looks like they're careless, they're cruel. It also looks like they're they're easily influenced, bitchy, harsh. Um, so this is the energy that this person is avoiding. And I also feel like that's why that Innocence card keeps popping up. They miss your good energy. The way you come across is unlike they've ever known. They're used to cold, harsh people. And so that's why even in, even in the encounter with you initially was unreal because they're used to cold, harsh people. And so you didn't even feel real to them initially. Six of Wands in the reverse. This person knows that this person is, oh, it says they're fame hungry. They wanted, they wanted, whoo, this is a person that was, yeah, definitely fame hungry. It looks like they were the ones to kind of like jump on whatever they felt glittered and glowed, 
whatever caught their attention in that time is where they were kind of running to. Um, yeah, this person, they feel some kind of way because they feel like a failure. They, there's, they wanted some type of success with this person, not because they felt love for this person, but because they just wanted to win. Tell me more. They didn't feel any kind of love for this person. They just wanted to win. Tell me more. And they're pissed off because they they feel like they're not going to be able to have what is that? Like the winning walk, the winning the winning lap around. They, they're not going to be able to have that winning lap. Okay. Chaos. Uh, oh wow. Um, Ace of uh, swords in the reverse. There is going to be no new beginning. There is going to be no. Um, I feel like they missed an opportunity, or that they're going to be missing an opportunity because because of their decisions and how they were in these streets. I feel like they got found out over exerting their feminine wiles in the reverse. So over giving of their selves physically, they could have been found out having an affair with someone. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's whole energy when it comes to the queen of wands in the reverse, but we also got the queen of swords in the reverse. So this is a, um, this is a spiteful, mean, <laughs> A uh, harsh hoe. And hoes come in. There is no sex when it comes to hoes. Hoes come in men, males, females, and anything in between. Uh, a hoe is a hoe is a hoe is a hoe. So, you know. Um, but this feels like this person was not just a hoe, but they were a mean, cold blooded, cold hearted, <laughs> harsh hoe. A harsh hoe? I mean, a hoe is a hoe, but what's worse than a harsh hoe? I don't know what's worse than that. So this person had to get up out of there. They said, nope, there's nothing worse than a harsh hoe. Ain't nothing worse. I mean, we can't even have a jolly hoe? A harsh hoe. Oh, no. Hi, hi, priestess of the reverse. Something came out. Something was discovered, illuminated. Someone was discovered. I, I feel like someone had... Someone was... Refusing to follow their intuition on something that their individual was definitely screaming at them on. And and therein lies that. I feel like it blew up in their face. But it also reawakened them to like But this was a connection that I I didn't really love this person either. They realized something. They realized, okay, well, I'm sitting here in this debauchery with this person that loves everybody but me. And I'm in this situation with this person that loves everybody but me. But I love someone who's not even here either. So in turn, they realize that, look, <laughs> we both lost the plot in this relationship, in this toxic karmic situation, in this karmic relationship. We both lost the plot. We both are not even in this for each other anymore. <laughs> it's just like other intentions. You know, it's just like... You just want to win just to win. And I just don't want to face my true feelings. And so it's it's just going to continue to be, it's going to continue to devolve into debauchery if we just continue to just be in the cycle. And so someone decided they were done with the cycle because they're in love, love. Like why, why pretend like I'm not in love, love? Why pretend? It's just like just to be with every just to be with everybody's boy or everybody's girl when I could just be in real love with someone whose energy is nowhere near anything like I've experienced before. But the stuff that I have experienced before, I actually don't want it. I actually don't want it. I want to work with collective. <laughs> These are not who I want to work with. I want to work with collective. I actually do want to work with someone that's a little different than myself. I actually do want that. I'm actually not afraid of differences and changes anymore. 
I actually realize that my soul craves those things now. I'm not afraid. I want to. I want to. I hear somebody saying, I want to. I want it. <laughs> A loving can be significant. Not a cup. Somebody's saying, I want to. I want it. I want it. And not, it's not like a sexual wanting. It's and That's a part of it, too. It's the whole enchilada, though. Their body, their minds, their, their souls, their hearts. It's, if there is a way, if there is a way, I, 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 I can hear this person say, if there is a way... And I'm sure there probably is a way. This person, I don't even look. I love me some tattoos, but I do not advertise people putting like names and stuff for people. And they like, look, look, that's not my business. I'm a prerogative. But it's like this person is saying, if they could write your name all over them, all over those pieces and parts of themselves, they would because they feel like they belong to you. <laughs> um. Two of Swords to the Three of Wands. This person in harmony again. This person, <laughs> this person realizes that there's a choice with you that they just refuse to make, and that's what stays in their mind because they they want to come across as a decisive figure to you that they can't decide in favor of the things that they desire. They do want you to, uh, to know and understand that. Um, but it's like they are waiting for something. There is something that they're waiting to come through as it pertains to a heartbreak or something that they had to cut off. But I'm also saying this is like, you know, they're waiting to see I'm also feeling like, you know, this could also be you guys' heartbreak between each other. Like, if this was just something that just couldn't get off the ground, if this is something that couldn't, you know, make a way through, um, this is someone that also feels like, you know, there may be some tricky, tough conversations that you guys have to get through, and that's really going to be the deciding factor of what really goes from there you know what what can happen from there they really understand that they can fantasize um all they want to about what they what they desire with you but it really depends on the conversation on how um you take them how you currently take them and how you'll continue to take them after the conversation is had but i do feel like someone's very optimistic <laughs> and giddy and excited to to try. Yeah, King of Wands. Someone's motivated to, to take control now. Um, it's like, this is someone that King of Wands energy in the upright. This is someone that it's like, <laughs> if nobody's afraid to take control, well, that's perfectly fine. I'm going to take control. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's go. That's that King of Wands in the upright. That's like, I'm ready to be the leader. Okay, let's go. Let's take it up. I'm excited. Let's go. I'll lead this. I'll charge it. This this person is getting in that t into that energy because they know that you're out here single, sexy, and free, making my own money. And if you're free, shout out to Maya. Um, all right. So that is their intention. Um. Just randomly, we'll just say, what can collective expect this? What can collective expect this reappearance, child? Roughly, when can the collective expect time frame? I want to hear from this divine masculine or divine feminine. You know, whoever is, whoever knows that they have to be the one to break the ice. When can my collective expect this person to break that ice? All right, just roughly. What can my collective expect for this person to break that ice? Um, your hard work is paying off. It says new moon in Capricorn. There's something about that Capricorn energy that makes you feel like step by step, things are happening step by step, and things are happening um, 
nonstop, whether you can see it or not. Things are constantly moving because Capricorn energy is that step-by-step -step energy. It's it's a step by step, but it's non-stop. So it's the energy of whatever a person Capricorn is the energy of whatever the destination is, they're gonna get to it because they take it step by step and they stay consistent on it. Surrender to the divine. It says full moon. So something is coming into full moon. Something's coming into full bloom I'm hearing as well um, this is also universal timing <laughs> so it's like yet the, the universe is setting the scene so it's like it's in this very R&B kind of way it's very romantic it's like the universe is saying we want this to be as juicy and delectable and just fan freaking tastic for you to enjoy and so we want it to be a surprise. We want it to unravel before you. We want it to be an event for you. We want you to enjoy this. And we want them to enjoy this. There's surprises for you that <laughs> I feel like this person has uh, in the works that that uh, the universe don't want you to know about. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot that's being contained in this moon energy that uh, the universe is saying, put your trust in us, right? Um, even if you feel like you have some trust issues, like what is that line and that that lyric again? We're full of so full of love, so little. Here we are, the two of us, so full of love, so little trust. But oh, we gotta let we have to learn to let it go and forget all the pain we knew. Um, you know, sometimes love hurts like hell, and sometimes it lifts you up to the highest of highs and highs, but. It, Y'all both know that neither one of y'all have loved like this. And so, and so there really is that feeling of the unknown of wow, where does this, how, how high can this go? <laughs> you never know. Yeah, it's time to release the negativity. Full moon of Scorpio. All right. So Scorpio season could be significant. Um, time frame, it, it really didn't give it. <laughs> it really didn't give it. Spirit is saying, we're holding this. It's going to be a surprise. Just let it be. Okay. So we're just going to let it be. We're going to let it be. Okay. But I do feel like if you do want to check up your next full moon, that could be significant. Um, if you want to look up a new moon in Capricorn, that could be significant. Or a full moon in Scorpio, that could be significant. But guess what? This person says, "I know you're my person," <laughs> and they say, "Someday we'll be together. Someday we'll be together." All right, let's see what else we got. Cycles, patterns taught in childhood. So that's what they're working on right now. Um, is looking and really analyzing those cycles and patterns that they picked up in in a childhood that no longer can has has can no longer stay because it it never granted them any kind of happiness and never helped them through their process. So it needs they realize it, it's something that needs to be purged. It's something that was never helpful to begin with to them. And the way they kind of did things, the ways they kind of mirrored the love shown around them. It, it really, it was not meant for them to follow those behaviors, at least not forever. It was always destined for them to discover their way of doing things and discover their standards by way of doing things the way other people did them and realizing the error of those ways. But, you know, we all have different ways of learning. Sometimes we can be instructed and sometimes we have to do it. We have to exercise it in real time, those actions for ourselves. OK, um, someone attempted a curse that will not win. Somebody attempted a curse because they realized that someone had deep feelings and they wanted to crush the deep feelings that someone has for you, but they weren't able to do that. If I was a girl, the things I'd do to you, but I'm not. If by Janet Jackson. So you have someone understood that someone had a deep desire for you. I feel like they probably tried to keep that person's feelings in the desire mode. This could have been the birds that they flocked of a feather with. 
Okay. Um, can't can you stand the rain? So these are people who are birds of fly. These are birds of feather that could never stand the rain. And this person is obsessed with you because they know that with you, you're tough, and that you're a warrior, and that if you decided to be loyal to someone, that there's nowhere that you're going. And this person is used to people who are not only temperamental, but were conditional. Everything had conditions, you know, but they're slaying these demons in the, out of their life now. Buffy, they're, be, they're being Buffy Summers now. All right, so what advice does my collective need to have during this time? Show me the advice that my collective need to hear at this time, and then we'll go into messages. Okay, collective saying go outside, get these messages, all right? It says it's time to go outside, tune into the powerful peace of nature wherever you are and feel at one with your habitat. You're going to be getting some messages about uh, possibly a, a, an upcoming change in habitat. There's something about habitat that's kind of popping out to me in this card as well. Show me advice with my collective. Something with abundance as well. It's going to be very abundant. This change or switch up in habitat can be very abundant for you, but I feel like you're going to know if it feels right for you, if it feels right Feel it all. These are general collective readings. If it don't fit, just throw it over your head, right? Flourish. Yeah. This is going to really, um, really expand you. It'll be really expansive for you. Um, I feel like it's going to expand both of you guys' ideas about a lot of different things. Um, it almost also feels like like it has taken a lot of work or it's going to take a lot of work to get these kind of these connections back together and get these people back together but there's also like a fluidity to it where it's like everybody can feel like it's gonna be a lot harder than it really is or than it turns out to be like it's like whatever seems like it's gonna be hard it's really not gonna be that hard because you're gonna be with your partner it's gonna be different when you feel like you're fighting with someone when you're finding along someone for a mutual um, end goal, it's a very powerful event. So it's like even the things that you dread, you end up realizing you don't dread quite as much because you understand you're not fighting it by yourself. I love that. Okay. Yeah, it's pure intention. This is the vibe we're on. And so this person knows who this vibe belongs to. Pure intention. They know who has the pure intention. It's their boo thing. It's their love thing. It's who they're going back to. It's that energy you can't fake. You can't fake you can't fake the funk. It can't be pretended. It's pure intention. Okay. And so solitude. Until then, you know, you're in your respective corner and they're in their in their respective corners. And that's it's that energy of like right before a, a wedding or a marriage. It's um except minus all the people. It's like when the bride is in her room and the groom is in her room, but there's nobody in the wedding. It's just like them in preparation for a wedding and they're in a church, but there's nobody there but they're getting prepared for the event. And so it's like the bride is in her room, the groom is in his room. And it's just that energy of like, y'all are in your collective spaces and kind of getting your heads together. And analysts and, and getting yourself together, analyzing the past as well as the future and how it all kind of comes into play for the present. And it feels like, it feels like, yeah, if it feels like a preparation for a wedding, but it doesn't, I don't see anybody there. But I see y'all all dressed up and preparing for like this lead up. Hidden depths, 
Yeah. It says something hidden is about to come to light. Perhaps a secret or a memory at the back of your mind. When we expose what's hidden, we can become free. Once we expose what's hidden, we can become free. All right. Let's get some. Ooh, what do they want to say real quick to my collective? What do they want to say to y'all real quick as we wrap this reading up? Ooh, okay. Someone's saying they want to be more than friends. Okay, so perhaps you guys are currently in the friend zone. They're trying to figure out how to get this out of the friend zone, or they could be an acquaintance to you, or they could just know you through friends. Um, it says, "I wish I could share my good news with you." This could be someone you're not currently in communication with um, because they have something they want to show to you. I feel like they probably used to go to you. Maybe it's dynamics in the relationships have changed where it's like they feel like they want to still come to you, but there may have been some type of hiccup in as to why they can't come to you with the news that they have. <laughs> okay. You're the best thing in my life. They're saying the timing just wasn't right for us. Okay, one more card. Oops, too many. Okay, one more for my collective. All right. I wish I had treated you better. All right. And I'm grateful for the spiritual lesson. Someone's growing. Someone's growing and healing. And, uh, you know, you get to choose whether or not that grown, healed version is a version that you still want to rock with or not. It's your choice. Um, if this is a, a brand new person, I also feel like they, the rules still apply. <laughs> you know, if this, even if this is a brand new person, the rules still apply to still going it with a, a, a blank slate. <laughs> Everybody gets a blank slate. Like, even if this is a brand new person that, you don't know or have never met before, there is still the fear that you will be using old conditioning in the new situation. So rules still apply. Make sure that you continue to allow yourself to release and let go of any kind of pain and hurt um, that you may have dealt with in, in the romantic sector because that's a big part of what we have to, that we came to experience here, <laughs> you know? Everybody's had their heart broken, you know? But the thing is that you don't want to become a villain because villain, what happens with villains? Villains get hurt and they decide to inflict the same pain onto others because they feel that hurt. They always feel like things are happening to them. And so they have to keep inflicting that kind of same kind of energy onto another because they're, they're in villain mode, okay? To become a hero, heroes are the people that have felt that same pain, have felt that same hurt, have also been heartbroken or been played and betrayed, but instead of inflicting that pain onto others, the last thing they would ever want to imagine is inflicting any kind of pain on anyone else because they have the mental, they have the mental memory of how pain feels like, and they would never want to inflict that on even their worst enemies, and that's how you can differentiate heroes from villains. It's that symbol. You know, heroes don't feel like, heroes feel like their experiences made them who they are. They grew from them. Even the ones that hate the most, they grew from them. Um, whereas a villain feels like those those things happened against them as opposed to for them. And so it really is a, the difference is perspective. A lot of the, a lot of our experiences are the same. The difference is perspective. All right. <laughs> Until next time. Mm.